Thank you, Hal. Good morning, gentlemen. I'd like to take a few minutes this morning to tell you why we are holding this meeting. This is a sales meeting. It will be devoted to selling two Kaigi products, but most of the time devoted to preluding, because as the sign says, our business is selling preluding. I can just hear some of you saying preluding, why are they gonna waste time when they know that I know all about preluding. But do you know all about preluding? <coughs> Before you can answer yes, you've got to know a lot more than just the indications, dosage, side effects, etc. To know all about preluding, you've got to know about such things as one, the market. What is the size of the anti-obesity market? What position does Preludin occupy in this market? What are the problems in selling this market? Two, the problems of obesity. First, the patient's problems. Second, what are the doctor's problems? Three, Preludin promotion. What are its strong selling points? What proof do we have to back up these points? What is the quality of the proof? How do we handle the competition? How do we handle the physician's objections? When you know the answers to all these questions, you are getting close to knowing all about preluding. To provide you with these answers is the major objective of this meeting. And I would like to review briefly with you the program for the next two days. Our first subject will be preluding market development. And this will be presented by Mr. Kosher of our promotion department. Next, we'll follow the background information on preluding with Mr. Duncan of our training department. Mr. Kosher will then present our preluding platform and plan of action for the third cycle. And this will be followed by Mr. Duncan <coughs> with a review of the preluding literature. Lunch will be from 12.30 to 1.30. When we reconvene, Mr. Kosher will discuss the preluding competition, and Mr. Duncan will follow with a film on preluding objections, and these objections will then be discussed in greater detail, and he will also supply suggested answers to the most common questions arising with preluding. The Hygerton competition and plan of action will be presented by Mr. Kosher who will also provide the summary for this portion of the meeting. Individual division plan of action meetings will then be held in the different lodges. Tomorrow morning, we will open up with a review of our sales performance for 1965 and for the first two months of 1966. This material will be presented by our director of marketing, Mr. Schatzberger. I will follow this up with market research data on all of our major products, and this will be followed with a review of the Dulcolax OTC performance and an explanation of our spring program on Dulcolax by Mr. Bischoff. Our 1965 PACE ratings will then be shown, along with a comparison of hospital representative sales for 1964 and 1965. Lunch will be from 12 to 1, and we will then reconvene for a discussion of VA and military sales, for an explanation of our new hospital formulary form, and an explanation of our new sampling procedure. I cannot stress too strongly how important it is that you do not leave this meeting with any unanswered questions on preluding. Preluding must be given as your third cycle opening detail. And it must be a full detail, not just a reminder. This is your major objective for the third cycle. At this time, I would just like to read...
Among the five leaders, you'll see that we have about 35% of this non-amphetamine market. That is, if you added up these figures, you'd get about 35%, and I think in your binder, you'll find that they are added up for you already. Merrill and their attenuate line is second with about 32%, adding these figures up. And Chilcott, of course, has come on rather strong with about 14% of the market. We should note, and by the way, that was in seven months. Seven months. We should note at this point, though, that new pre prescriptions have been declining in the last few months. And in December, Preludin was back in first place. And we'll cover some other prescription uh, aspects in a little while. The recent Geige strength has been in the Endurettes. However, you'll note the proportion of tablets to long-acting forms with some of the competition. Note this proportion. Note that proportion. The trend, of course, is clear. The physicians seem to prefer, and of course their patients probably prefer too, long-acting forms. And this is true for the entire uh, competition besides the Endurettes. That's, that's one reason why the Endurettes caught on real well, because uh, we realized in 1959 that, that the trend was showing very clearly a preference for the long-acting forms, and very rightly so, we came out with a long-acting form at that time. And it points out another thing, too, that it, it points out the excellent reason why the Endurettes need considerable emphasis in our detail. And of course, no, as no surprise to you, uh, this particular slide doesn't show it, but your chart in the book does, Preludin is not big hospital business. And uh, that's true for the rest of the items, too, in this line. Preludin and its competitors are drugstore items. However, don't overlook any potential in hospitals. Now, the etiology of obesity, and there is only one cause, and only one primary cause, and that is a caloric intake persistently exceeding the caloric output, pure and simple. And the calorie intake comes from the foods that we ingest. For example, proteins give us four calories per gram, carbohydrates, four calories per gram, fat, nine calories per gram, and alcohol, seven calories per gram. The caloric output, in turn, then, is the result of total living activities. Number one would be the resting cell metabolism, thinking, muscular activity, and work of the internal organs. All of these things use calories. Now, the excess of calories, that is, the intake over the output from whatever source, whether it be carbohydrates, proteins, or fats, are converted and they're stored as fat. <coughs> now here just gives us an idea when the output and the intake is in balance, there is no change in weight. However, if the intake is higher than the output, then we have a weight gain. If on the other hand, the intake is lower than the output, we have a weight loss. Factor causing increased caloric food intake. <coughs> Number one is simply an increased accessibility of foods, also an increased enjoyment of food, and of course enjoyment is something that is learned, also frustrated social business or sexual pursuits. Uh, divisional managers have this problem. <laughs> Also, an increased activity 